Well, this is the lesson you've been waiting for. This is the one you've been looking for. The last lesson. Unfortunately, that means this will be the last time we're together, even cyber together. Uh, but it is our final lesson, and it is on the final book of the Bible. This is a revelation, which means something that was revealed to John by Jesus. As at some point in John's life, he had been exiled, banished, sent to the island of Patmos. And it's while he's in exile there that he writes this letter. Talk about social distancing. So he writes this letter, this revelation down, while he's in exile on the island of Patmos. It's a very different book than the rest of the New Testament, that's for sure. It is, it is an, a revelation, and the only one that is purely prophecy, or what is being revealed to John. It's not about looking back on um, past events. It's about talking about what is coming. And it's written in a very different style than we're used to reading. And that takes a little bit of, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, there, there's, we're not going to try to go through Revelation in detail and try to analyze all the prophecies and, and make sense of all that. It's a very, that's it, way too challenging for us right now. Rather, we're going to take a look at what's the purpose of the book of Revelation. What's the big picture it's trying to give you? And in some ways, it resembles a couple of books like Daniel and Ezekiel in the Old Testament, which were also prophetic books, books of prophecy. But it's, those were about things that have, have come. Um, this is about things that have not yet come. It's about the end of all things. And... So I, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get into, you know, picking through all the details. Or we'll drive ourselves crazy there. But I want to look at the overall big picture of Revelation. So he writes this, and the first thing we have after his prologue, his introduction, where he talks about, you know, that he was on the island, and that he's addressing this to, now, to the seven churches. He says, John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, and he writes this. And the reason he's doing that, he gives a little later in the first chapter, when he says that in his vision, he heard a voice saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, and to Pergamum, to Theatira, and Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. What, what do we mean by the seven churches? Well, there were churches in those places, but the seven is one of those perfect numbers. So it's written to the church as a whole, to the whole of the, the, the church represented by these seven. And so that's who John is addressing this to. And what is Jesus' purpose in revealing this to him? What is he giving this to them all for? Well, he gives a hint of that when he says, I am the fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. A little closer look at that. I think, to a large extent, the whole purpose of the book of Revelation is given right there in those first two words. Jesus says, fear not. He knew that his church was going to go through all kinds of hard times and all kinds of struggles and challenges. And he tells them, fear not. Why? Because of what he shows them is coming for them. He shows them the final victory. The end of all things is that Christ is triumphant. Satan is bound away eternally, never to harm us, harass us, or touch us again. And it is all about his victory. We may not see that in our lives. Unless he returns while we're still living, we won't. But we know it's there. And it may not look like that's what the reality is for Christians, as the reality around us is, is anything but that. But we know that all of this will pass away. The triumph that he has in store for us will and ultimately be reality. And so as we read through the book, as you look through the book, follow the lessons, lesson in your book, 
And the first thing I want you to do is just what it says there. You have that timeline down at the bottom of pages 122 and 123. And it gives you some verses of promises God makes all the way along in the history of his salvation for us. All the way from the promise in the garden in Genesis to uh, his triumphant passion and resurrection. And read through all of those passages listed there and hear the unfolding of God's promises for us. Unfolding of his, of his fulfillment of his promises for us. Take that trip through our history. And then as you get to looking at Revelation, um, I'm just going to use the questions that are there in the book on page 123. And kind of like our last lesson, this isn't going to be true-false. I've got one right answer in mind, although that doesn't mean anything you say is okay. There will still be better and not so good answers. But take a shot at answering these questions. Um... And if you need help, again, if you need help answering them, get a hold of me and I'll see what I can do to help you with them. But we're going to take, just to get a feel for the whole meaning of the book of Revelation, why does he give this? What does he want it to do for us? It is a tricky book, like I said, in that it's a lot of prophecy and it's written in ways that we're not used to dealing with. And if we try to say, well, see, this is what it says here and see, it's happening here and here and this person was prophesied here and... That's not how he's writing this. It's going over in very symbolic ways just what he's talking about. Just what he's showing us is going to come to us. So take a look through, the look at those questions, see what you can do with it, and um, like I said, if you need help understanding, if you need help with any, uh, of, with what I'm looking for, with what you can give on that, uh, reach out to me, get a hold of me, and I'll see what I can do to help. Um, as this is our last lesson, um, I am not certain what I will have up for you for next week. Um, just have to wait and see on that. And by the time you get to this, you can smell the end of the school year in whatever way it's coming this year. And we don't know what that is when I record this. So have fun with it. Um, Find great joy and comfort in the book of Revelation without trying to parse out all the prophecies you're trying to look for and like world events and all that. That's to misunderstand what he's doing. Just find the great triumph of this is about the exalted Lord Christ of Revelation who is your salvation and who wishes to share that victory with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.